Weird sciencey facts that boggle my mind. You want to hear some unsexy sex facts about flying figs and fruit? Fair warning, if you like figs, you may want to flick because these facts may make your affinity for figs fade. If I was to ask you what figs were, you'd probably tell me they're a fruit, and you'd be kind of right. But they're also a flower, an inverted one. And like other flowering plants, they need to be pollinated. But your traditional pollinators, like the bees and the birds, can't do the pollinating when the flower is on the inside of the fruit. So figs have had to build a more monogamous relationship with a specific species of pollen propagators, the fig wasp. There's quite a few different species of fig wasp, but they're usually divided into two categories, the pollinators and the parasitic assholes who use the figs for reproduction without returning the favor. But the reproduction process between the two is all pretty similar. The female fig wasp flies around till she finds a fig, and the fig has a special little hole up by the stem that really only that female fig wasp can fit through. Almost. Squeezing through that little hole usually relieves her of her antenna and her wings. Which sounds like quite a sacrifice, but this is a one-way trip and she won't be needing them again. Now if she's lucky, she's found a male fig and she crawls inside and can lay her eggs. Once she's done that, the fig can grow and not long after, the males will hatch. And they are immediately looking for love. A little awkwardly, close to 80% of the time, only one wasp lays her eggs in a fig, so a lot of times like a Florida resident, that love is directed at family. Even more awkwardly, the females aren't even hatched yet, but that doesn't stop the males from mating with their unborn sisters. Once they're done doing that, the blind, wingless males start burrowing their way out of the fig. Unfortunately, nobody told them they can't survive outside of the fig, but their sacrifice is a noble one. Because when the now pregnant females hatch from their eggs shortly after, they can follow the males' paths out of the fig fruit to the outside world. And as they crawl their way out, they pick up pollen from the male fig along the way. Once they get out, the males who are dying of exposure offer an easy to distracting meal for predators, allowing the females to fly away, ferrying their fig facials to other flora. And if they're lucky, they too will find another male fig to go and lay their eggs in. But if those fig trees are lucky, the female will find a female fig to accidentally crawl into. And a female fig wasp can't lay her eggs in a female fig. So she crawls inside, unwittingly being unable to repopulate, but the pollen she's packing will pollinate the fig fruit. Once she's done that, she passes away. But the female fig fruit, which is the one that turns into an edible fruit, now being pollinated, has the ability to grow into a fruit that can feed and seed. And since the figs can't ripen into a mature fruit unless they're pollinated, every single fig you have ever eaten has had a fig wasp die inside of it. Now before you freak out, you're not eating a fig wasp every time you eat a fig fruit. The fig actually releases enzymes as it grows, it dissolves and consumes the fig wasp. So don't worry, your fig bars should be bug free. Now the non-pollinating fig wasps basically have the same life cycle, they're just ungrateful moochers who don't pollinate the fig in the process. But the fact that fig trees wouldn't bear fig fruit without the fraternity of flightless fathers familial fornication so female fig wasps can forge forward with their flights to faraway figs to ensure their future? Well, that is pretty mind-boggling.